Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Take a Spiritual Journey. I am Reverend Robin Volker, and tonight we are going to be exploring the silence. The inspiration for this weekly series is from The Quest, a Unity textbook written by Richard and Mary Alice Jafala. The Jafalas begin each lesson of The Quest with an interesting story. Listen to this one. Imagine with me if that a cold, damp north wind is blowing the chill off the moors and an American is walking down a street in Scotland to visit his Scottish friend. He pulls his coat close to his throat to keep the wind out, knowing that his friend's home will be warm with a fire crackling and he has waited so long to be able to come and meet his friend. Ralph Waldo Emerson and Thomas Carlyle had been friends for many years in a deep relationship through correspondence before they ever met in person face to face. And finally Emerson planned a trip to Europe and he put Scotland in the itinerary so that he could go and meet the renowned essayist and historian. When Emerson knocked on the door of Carlyle's home, Carlyle opened the door and welcomed him warmly. He invited him into the parlor, offered him a pipe, and lit one for himself. They sat by the fire in virtual silence for the entire evening until it was time to retire. When the sitting was complete, the two great men stood up, warmly shook hands, and complimented each other on a fabulous evening together. Perhaps you too have had experiences in your life where the coming together in relationship, or perhaps in nature, was so profound that words could not express the feelings that you were having. Times like these call for silence, don't they? They call for us to not act normally, but to um, just enjoy and savor the moment, savor the sweetness that we are experiencing in that time. We can feel the full meaning of that togetherness and listen with an inner ear to a message that is not being communicated with words. It is in the silence such as this that we meet God. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6, <clears throat> it is written, But when you pray, go into your room and close the door. And pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who is in secret will reward you. Jesus was very clear in his teachings of how to communicate and connect with Abba, Father, God, Spirit, Allness, Infinite, that we had to go to a quiet, secret place. When you go to that secret place, only you and the God of your being can enter. Only you can go there. No one can go with you, and no one can go for you. That secret place is only for you and God. And in that secret place, you shut out all the clamoring of the outer concerns of your life and the world, and you are there with God alone. In shutting out all of that clamoring, you also shut out your thoughts. This secret place, it's more than a room in your home. It is more than 
uh, a beach or a retreat center. It is an inner space, an internal and personal space that you go to, a total silence. And when you enter into this secret space, no one else is there and no one can disturb you. No one and no thing can disturb you in this secret place. So imagine with me that inside this secret space is a safe harbor. It's a friendly port in the storms of life. And it's a place of peace and rest. And it waits for you. It's there for you. You don't have to do anything to prepare it. It's like going to your favorite bed and breakfast. Everything is already set up for you. You just have to get through the gateless gate, as the Buddhist would say. Those of you who have been on the spiritual path for quite some time know that the secret place that I'm talking about is also called meditation. And we do a little bit of that each week at the end of our sessions together. Meditation is a very important part of the spiritual journey. It is that secret, silent place where you find peace and strength, rest and renewal. Spending some time each day in this secret place, in this place of stillness, can be perhaps the most rewarding part of your entire day. The Jafalas write this, the object is to experience your spirituality, to feel your oneness with the one, to sense the comfort and the healing and the guidance which God offers you. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful place to adventure to? How many times have you ever had the frustrating experience of talking with someone who would not let you get a word in edgewise? Or someone who just absolutely would not quit talking. You know that in those conversations, there's really no connection happening. You can't get your point across, and it's very frustrating. You don't even really want to engage with that person because they're just chattering on and on and on and on, usually about themselves, just on and on and on. Have you ever considered that that same frustration and disconnection can show up in your relationship with God? See, this energy of life that we call God or spirit this allness, I like to call it the infinite, this realm of energy that's all around us, that made us, that breathes our lungs and beats our hearts. See, it's constantly trying to connect with us. Constantly trying to connect with us. If we only pause in our human busyness, to allow that connection to happen. All the guidance and inspiration and divine ideas that you could possibly ever want or need can be tapped in this place of meditation. It is in prayer and meditation that we make the connection with our spiritual nature. Remember, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And we get caught up in our human experience every day, all day, all day long. Meditation and prayer, but differently, they help us to connect to our spiritual nature. I want you to know that there's nothing mysterious about meditation. It is not voodoo, it's not woo-woo, it's not satanic, it's not evil, it's not of the devil, it's not uh, anti, anti-Christian. The word meditation may not have been used in all uh, Christian circles, 
but the practice of pausing and reflecting, of being quiet and allowing thoughts to pause, has been around since the beginning of humankind. It has been in the ancient campfire. It was experienced by early man lying on his back, gazing up at the stars or the clouds. This pause of life has been around forever. We just happen to now label it as meditation. It is simply a quieting of the mind. That's all it is. And that's all it means. Is that in order to hear the still small voice of God, we have to quiet our human thinking. Wayne Dyer called it getting in the gap between the thoughts. We have said before that all you desire is created in the mind of God in the instant that you desire it. Let me say that again. Everything you desire is created in the realm of the infinite in the moment that you desire it. So it's out here in the invisible realm of pure potential. But we want it in our physical experience of our lives. Meditation helps us to be able to bring it into form because in that secret silent place, we drop the barriers that we hold against the coming of those things that we truly desire. We drop the human barriers so that those things that are already created in spirit can come and fulfill our lives. It is in this still quietness that goes beyond words and thoughts that we really tap into that creative space of infinite possibility. And it is there that we begin to become enlightened. What does it mean to be enlightened? To be enlightened means that I know more in this moment than I did a few moments ago. We get new thoughts. The answers that you seek will most probably not show up in your meditation. So if there's something gnawing at you and you're trying to figure it out and you get off this video and you go and sit and follow in these instructions that I'm about to share in my uh, meditation and, and you expect that when you are in that meditative state or when you get up from your chair that you will have new insights and know exactly what it is that you are to do, that may not happen exactly that way. Now, it might, and if it does, write me. I want to hear about it. More than likely, as you develop a practice of meditation, of stopping your human thoughts and allowing spiritual thoughts to come to you, divine ideas, as we like to call them, then at some point later on, on another day or a week or later, a new idea will come to you, clear as a bell, and there it will be because it found a way to get through your human consciousness and show up for you. If you would like some hands-on practical advice and uh, techniques for using your meditation practice, then you might want to mark our Tea for Talk tomorrow Put that on your calendar at noon. I'll post the credentials in the Facebook feed after this video. Remember last week I said, uh, took a quote from Albert Einstein, that a problem cannot be solved at the level of thinking that created the problem. 
A problem cannot be solved at the level of thinking that created a problem. So what that means is, at this level, here are your human problems. And perhaps you're worried about the coronavirus. Perhaps you have a physical concern that you need to address and you're afraid to go to the doctor because of the coronavirus. Or perhaps you have lost your job and have been laid off. Or you're frustrated because your children are home from school and you don't get a break and you're having to help them with these computerized lessons and you don't have the patience for that or the, the know-how to be able to help them know again of what these problems are. We actually can't get to the secret silent place with our intellect. Our intellect can't get through the gateless gate. Only our spirituality can get through the gate to the realm of spirit. And meditation is a meeting ground of spiritual experience. The silence is a holy time. And we create that space within us, within our minds. We, we develop our bodies in, to um, know what meditation feels like. So we teach our bodies what, what it feels like to relax. And we teach our minds how to quiet. And it becomes a time of worship and joy and thanksgiving. And it's like the sanctuary of spirit is living within us. Do you remember that gospel song? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I love that. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Meditation is the inner sanctuary where we go so that our lives become a living sanctuary of spirit expressing. The psalmist wrote about lying in green pastures, about being led beside still waters, and about their soul being renewed and restored. This is, these are the uh, rewards of going to the secret silent space. And I promise you that if you will explore this silence on a regular basis, that you will come away with all those blessings of peace and renewal and joy, regardless of the circumstances happening in your human experience. Just as Thomas Carlyle waited patiently for his friend Emerson to arrive at his home and sit in the silence with him, Spirit is awaiting you to come and sit in the silence with God. Let's pause and practice together. So just find that quiet place. And hopefully you are somewhere that you can just turn your thoughts within. And go into a greater experience of God. The invitation is to sit comfortably, either in a chair or on the floor, with your back straight but not rigid. And to be in a quiet place where you won't be disturbed or distracted for a few minutes. Rest your hands in your lap. Close your eyes and focus on your breathing. 
as we go through this time of relaxation together. Inhale through your nose and softly blow it out through your mouth. Inhale and softly, easily blow out the full breath. Do that again a couple of times to yourself. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. On the next inhale, tighten and tense all the muscles of your feet. And as you exhale, release those muscles. Let's do that again. Inhale and tighten the muscles of your feet. And release that tension on the exhale. On your next breath, squeeze the muscles of your lower legs and calves. And as you exhale, release those muscles. In the next breath, repeat that again. Now, on this inhale, tighten your thigh muscles. And when you exhale, relax those muscles. Repeat tightening your thigh muscles. And breathe out relaxation for your thigh muscles. On this breath, squeeze the muscles of your abdomen and your pelvic muscles as you inhale. And on your exhale, let them relax and go mushy. Breathe in and harden those abdominal muscles like you're preparing for someone to punch you. And then exhale. Relax. On the next breath, tighten the muscles of your buttocks. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale, release. And do that again. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale, release. As you inhale, squeeze your hands, make a fist. Make a fist with both hands. And then exhale and shake your hands out. Inhale, make the fist. And then squeeze. Release and shake your hands out. For this breath, squeeze the muscles of your arms. Flex your arms. Squeeze your biceps. Squeeze your triceps. Squeeze your forearms, and then release. And do that one more time. <clears throat> On the next breath, <coughs> inhale and squeeze the muscles of your shoulders. Squeeze your shoulders up to your ears. Tight, tight, tight. And then exhale and drop your shoulders. And repeat that for another breath. On the next breath, squeeze the muscles of your face. 
clench the muscles of your jaw and make a face and release. Squint your eyes and squeeze your eyebrows together. And as you exhale, release all the muscles in your face. Now you may be experiencing a tingling all over your body as you have awakened your various muscle groups and then released the tension from them that you have been carrying all day. Keep your attention focused on your breathing while you notice your body's relaxation. And choose a single syllable word to help you bring the focus back to this moment. Perhaps peace or om or love. And we pause here for a few breaths in the silence as you focus on your mantra word. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. As we begin to come back, <clears throat> to this physical time and space. We enjoy the relaxation, the pause, the space in all of the busyness and all the concerns of our lives. In these few moments, we have re-energized our physical body temple, We've allowed our mind to rest. And it is with gratitude that we come back allowing that gap between our human experience and our spiritual experience to be made less. And so it is. Amen. Thank you for joining me tonight on Take a Spiritual Journey and being willing to stay with me through this process and explore the silence. As we begin to draw our service tonight to a close, we want to take an opportunity to bless your financial gifts and thank you so much for your support of Unity of Gainesville and these these uh, lessons and services that we have provided for you. So if you will just take your wallet or your credit card or your gift and place it over your heart and repeat with me this beautiful offertory blessing. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I choose to give and all that I am open to receive. I give in love and receive in abundance. Thank you, God. I am so blessed. 
If tonight's message blessed you in any way, please use the gift plus text number that's now on your screen. You simply type that number into the address line of the text function and put the amount of your gift in the message line. The number to text is 833-987-2047. You'll be walked through some simple prompts of this secure service that is dedicated specifically for Unity of Gainesville. We appreciate each gift and each giver. If you are interested in other ways of giving, then visit our website at unityofgainesville.org and click the donate page for different options and ways of giving. Tomorrow, we offer Tea for Talk at noon on Zoom. We'll break down these ideas that I've discussed tonight. We'll talk about meditation. What is that practice like for you? What questions do you have? What gets in the way of meditation for you? How can you overcome your human resistance to go to that spiritual realm for just a few minutes every day? If you do not have the Zoom login, I will post it in the Facebook feed after this video. Or you can write to me at Rev, R -E -V, Rev Robin Volker at gmail.com, and I will get you those credentials. This Sunday, <clears throat> for Sunday morning, we will have a special guest with music and message, Debbie Schrote. You have heard her music before if you've been watching our video feeds. And she will be giving a talk called Music, the Universal Language. We'll be broadcasting from our church campus and expect to see our feed about 1 o'clock on Sunday. Not at the traditional 1045 time, too much traffic. But look for it at 1 o'clock this Sunday. Your call to action this week. Set a regular time for your meditation practice. For several days, not just one day, but for several days, carve out 10 minutes. 10 minutes. That's all it takes. Five. If five is all you have, start with five. Find a comfortable chair in a quiet spot in your home. It's best to, to sit and not lie down. Just, you can use the relaxation me uh, meditation that I did tonight. And when you get to the silent part at the end, you can make that be as long as you want it to be. Um, if you have some place you have to go, set a timer and let that bring you back to your human experience. Don't try to control your thoughts. Just savor your time in between the thoughts. Allow them to be. And write me and let me know how it works for you. Let's close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is right here in this experience right now. And all is well. I know that is the truth for you, and that is the truth for me. I'll see you next time. This is Robin Volker. Good night, and God bless.